Good morning. Welcome to the 9 o'clock uh, Bible study at Bethel. Uh, can we begin with prayer? Our Heavenly Father, I just thank you that we have your word. We have you that thank you that we have a ability to teach your word. And freedoms that we have that we aren't bothered by or molested by soldiers or governments or anything else. I just thank you, Lord, for uh, your concern for each one of us. And as we go through COVID-19, especially now, there's a lot of people that suffer from loneliness, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, you might use this time that we can, uh, you can speak to those who are lonely. Ask that you'd be with us now, guide us and direct us, prepare each of our hearts. Fill me with your spirit, Lord, because there ain't no way I can do this on my own. I just thank you now in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Have you ever stopped and figured out how many thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars that people have made off of loneliness? Uh, Hank Williams, Roy Orbison, uh, Jimmy Dean, they all sang songs, made thousands, even millions of dollars singing about loneliness. They sang, I'm so lonely I could cry, and lonesome blues, only the lonely. Jimmy Dean, with his maybe the best uh, song he ever sang, was uh, Big Bad John. A couple lines of that song goes, John drifted, uh, drifted into town, stayed all alone. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, no one knows where John called home. He just drifted into town and stayed all alone. TV shows were the same thing. Uh, they, guys came and pretended to be really nice guys and Eventually, they ended up with owning the whole town and everybody in it. And they weren't so good. They were heads of gangs. They wrestled cows. They robbed banks, trains, plane, uh, trains, uh, anything that they could do. Uh, drove homesteaders away. Some guy rides into town, stranger. Nobody seems to know who he is, where he come from. Uh, Figures out what's going on in the town. Takes care of the whole problem at the end of the show. He waves goodbye to all the townspeople. Kisses the leading lady goodbye. Saddles up sea biscuit and rides off into the sunset all by himself. The Bible has a couple verses I like to read about loneliness. In Psalm 102, verse 6 and 7, it says, I'm like a pelican in the wilderness. I'm like an owl of the desert. I watch and am as a sparrow on a housetop. Loneliness is, is a thing that's gripping a lot of people today. You ever think about the kinds of loneliness? There's loneliness of students. They've got to keep up their grades. When uh, my boy was young, uh, he brought a friend home from school and a uh, he sat in our house and actually sat there and cried because he was going to have to take his report card home that day. And he went from an A to a B. And that was totally, un, un, couldn't even begin to imagine what was going to happen to him when his parents saw a B instead of an A. There was that much pressure on him. Things got a lot worse since then. We got bullying. Kids going around beating up on kids. Uh, for all kinds of stupid reasons, really. One kid in the States asked a girl out on a date, and she wouldn't go with him. So he went home, got a gun, went back to school, and shot some kids. A kid in New York City had a uh, leather jacket, and another kid wanted it, and he wouldn't give it to him. And he caught him in a, in a washroom, and he killed him, beat him to death, choked him, took his jacket. And we got sexting now. Sexting is all over, including Simcoe. And people are committing suicide because of the loneliness that all this is causing. But there's another kind of loneliness. There's a loneliness of society. Seniors, some seniors, uh, I know of two especially, that they were big, heavy men, and their wives were pretty small. 
and they had mobility problems, and if they uh, fell, there's nothing their wives could do for them. So they, they volunteered themselves to go to a nursing home where people could watch over them 24 hours a day because that's what they needed. But there are some seniors that their kids, their relatives, they just don't want them around no more. They're a pain, so they stick them in there and get rid of them. Linda and me uh, volunteered uh, at some nursing homes. And in one in particular, uh, relatives for any a number of reasons, anniversary, Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, would bring a gift and take it to the nurse's station and say, take it to Mrs. You Know or Mr. You Know and, and, and tell them, that, you know, I really, I really I wanted to see mom or I wanted to see dad, but I got I to gotta go. I'm, I'm behind. I'm, I got a date. I got a, a business, business meeting or I got something to do and I got to be there. And they leave it to the nurses and they never, ever see them. And now with COVID-19, even the people who visited faithfully, their friend, their relatives, their friends, uh, it's, they just can't do it anymore. But there's two uh, in the loneliness of society. There's street people. Some street people are there because they want to be. I worked with some of them. And the comment was made, why should I work? The government will pay me. I'd be stupid to work. And he's there because he wants to be. And he's there because the government keeps handing him out money. But some are there because they've downsized. Maybe the place they worked closed up because of the virus. I don't know. They're there not anything that they did. They just are kind of a victim of circumstances. And if I can make a, an advertisement right now, there was a guy 15, 20 years ago in, in Simcoe as an assistant pastor. And he resigned from his church, and he went to Hamilton, and he started a restaurant at 514 Barton Street. He uh, has a, ba a, a, a big, huge jar of buttons. Anyone who's allowed to eat in this restaurant, uh, and you can pay for it, just like everybody else, but if you're... Uh, short of money, if you're a street person, uh, and you get a coffee and a soup and a sandwich, maybe it's $5, I don't know how much it costs, maybe it's $5, and you only have a loony or a toony, maybe you don't have any money at all, you can reach in and take out buttons, and they'll count as a dollar, and you can pay for your meal. And it gives these street people some dignity that they don't have to stand out on a street corner and big nickels and dimes and people walking by. But there's another kind of loneliness. Loneliness is suffering. You can suffer physically. Uh, Paul had a thorn in the flesh and he prayed that he, God would remove it. But God said his strength would be made perfect in, in uh, Paul's weaknesses. So he let him keep it. Maybe you had a doctor's report that just didn't quite go the way you thought it should go. Uh, in 2010, I was told I had a year to live, give or take two months, if I didn't have an operation. And I thought the doctor was going to start crying when he told me. But uh, we got through all that, uh, and I'm still here. But maybe, maybe, just maybe, there was a lady... 55 years ago, I guess, 60 years ago. And they couldn't do, doctors couldn't do things that they can do now. And she got arthritis, and she got arthritis really, really bad. And every time you seen her, it was like night and day. Her limbs seemed to be more twisted. Uh, she had to buy bigger shoes because she couldn't get her feet into her shoes. They were all bent and warped. And her hands and her fingers was all warped and gnarled. And that was really too bad because the lady was a painter. She painted pictures. And the last, I don't know, 15 years she lived, she never said much to anybody. I never heard her complain. I give her credit for that. 
as much as she must have pain she must have been in, she never complained once. But she just couldn't paint no more, and that just ended her whole world. But there's another, there's a uh, loneliness of, of suffering mentally. Maybe, maybe you know somebody that's lost their job because of COVID. They're quite disappointed. I would be. I sure would be. But as you try to go find another job, you can't find one because everybody else is downsized and they're looking too. That disappointment turns to discouragement. And you get discouraged. And uh, a little while ago on television, they had a, a report of uh, all the percentage of people uh, workforce that was unemployed. And at the end, uh, the guy, the news said it wasn't counting the people who were dis discouraged. They just gave up. They quit looking for a job. They, they can't find one. That discouragement, if we're not careful, leads to depression. And depression is pretty bad. You know, you've been uh, unemployed so long that the unemployment insurance is starting to run out. Now you're working on your bank account. The depression leads to despair because what are you going to do when the bank account runs out? And finally, if you don't deal with it, that despair leads to death. <laughs>